I'm continuing my search for the perfect budget action camera. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about the Xiaomi Seabird 4K. On Amazon, you can find it listed under Sunmall, Sunmall Seabird 4K. But before we get into this camera, I wanna go over real quick my requirements for the perfect budget action camera. Number one, to be a budget action camera, it's gotta be less than $150. Because for $150, just go buy a GoPro. Number two, and this is a two-part thing, the camera has to have at least 1080p resolution, although I do prefer 4K. And along with that, it has to have good image quality. Number three, it's gotta have electronic image stabilization without a gimbal. Number four, I gotta have interchangeable batteries. And we'll get into that a little bit later on in this review. And number five, this one is an addition from all the other reviews that I've done, the audio needs to sync with the video. Which means, what it sounds like I'm saying matches up what it looks like I'm saying. Not something like this. First off, I was super excited to see a budget action camera made by Xiaomi, which is a Chinese electronics company. You might be familiar with their cell phones. But did you know they made one of the best 360 cameras ever made? This one is called the Xiaomi Mi Sphere. Comment below if you want to see a little video on is the Mi Sphere worth it in 2000 now 2020? When I ordered the Seabird, out of the box it came with a pack of anti-fog inserts, a waterproof housing, and the camera itself. In the box itself comes the camera, a lens cover, a battery, a USB to micro USB cable, and some paperwork. Let's take a closer look at this camera, huh? The Xiaomi Seabird looks pretty simple. It's only got two buttons, one on the top and one on the front. The front is your power on and mode button, and the top is your start and stop record button. It looks like it's only got three microphones one on the bottom and one on the side. On this side here you have your port for the micro SD card and the micro USB port to charge the camera. Nothing on this side and on the bottom a quarter 20 tripod mount and the battery compartment. The battery itself is a 1050 milliamp battery and this battery looks pretty typical for budget action camera batteries. To turn it on, press and hold the mode slash power button on the front. Sings you a little song. Oh, my battery's about to die. Better plug it in. There we go, plugged in and charging. Just like another action camera I know, you swipe right and left to go through the different modes that the camera has. Video, burst photo mode, single photo mode, looping video mode, and then another video setting, which in this instance is 1080p at 60 frames per second. To access the different settings of the camera, you just tap on the screen and here you can change your photo settings, video settings, and on this side here, if you push this, then you'll be able to replay videos that you've taken. Right here, this little gear looking thing is are the general settings of the camera. It has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, you can choose your language, the brightness of your LCD, you can have it with the beeps on and or the LEDs on and off. You can have it so you can lock the screen. Oh. Charging recording. Charging while recording. You can either have it on or off. Why would you have it on? Why would there be a choice? Why can't, why wouldn't you just leave it on? Well, let's take a look here. Under high temperature, environment video recording while charging will cause the device to overheat. I've been using this camera for a couple months now, actually, and I've never seen it overheat. Going back here, you either check video or slow motion, and then you can change the different settings. Right now, I have it set to a resolution of 4K, 30 frames per second. And that is true 4K, not some type of 
interpolated 4K. Hit the gear button under the video menu and you can pick your different type of encoding, H.264 or H.265. If you don't know what any of this is, I just recommend that you stay in H.264. I'll skip those. And then you have two different options here. You can either turn EIS on, which is Electronic Image Stabilization, or LDC, which is Lens Distortion Correction. Unfortunately, you can't have both of them on at the same time. It's either one or the other. And voice recording, of course we want voice recording. And here under the little iris are all your camera settings. It's nice that this camera has the full ability to do all types of manual changes. But for now, I just have everything set to auto. Backing out here, under photo, the only two resolutions you can have for photo are 12 mix megapixels in 4x3, which will use the entire sensor size, or 8 megapixels in 16x9, which make, makes sense because you're shrinking down the amount of information that you can put in a 16x9 area. You're not using the whole sensor. And that's a quick run through of the menu settings inside the Xiaomi Seabird. The camera itself also has an app which I did download and try to use with the camera, but it just kept getting stuck on firmware update. I couldn't even bypass not using the firmware update to use the camera. But it doesn't, didn't really matter to me because I don't like to have my action cameras stuck to my phone. I like to just be able to take my camera, hit record, and run out the door. Next up, let's talk video quality. My personal opinion, straight out of the camera, the image quality is pretty good. It's not super sharp, but it's decently sharp. Next, let's talk about the electronic image stabilization. Now, because this camera has that option, we'll show, I'll show you real quick what the camera looks like with electronic image stabilization on, which I think is pretty good. Although you do get that flex on the bottom and the top of the screen when you're walking. That's the camera's way of trying to stabilize the image. And then what it looks like with the lens distortion correction on, which means that the electronic Im image stabilization is off. So here you go, 4K, 30 frames per second, with lens distortion correction on. However, now the electronic image stabilization is off. So with me moving, it should be a little bit more shaky, but you should not be seeing the flex on the top and on the sides of the video. We'll see how well it works out. Now let's take a look at what this camera looks like in a low light situation. Again, we're set at 4K 30 frames per second with electronic image stabilization on and lens distortion correction off. The camera's about arm lengths away. How does it look? And how about in a super low light situation? Let's talk batteries now. So this camera I told you came with that one single battery that was just over a thousand milliamps. I've had a thousand milliamp batteries last for about an hour. However, on this camera, I've only been able to get the battery to last about a half an hour with straight recording. And I'm not talking like I turned it on and left it running. I'm talking on and off recording. Like I hit record, I took some video for a little bit, I turned it off, I went and did, you know, walked around a little bit, hit record again. 30 minutes. Not a lot of time. Which is why it's so important to have interchangeable batteries. But I haven't been able to find any replacement interchangeable batteries so that I can charge them and be able to run all day. Maybe one day I'll be able to find replacement batteries for this camera. And for number five, audio syncing with the video, let's go look at this example real quick. How does it sound? Is what I'm saying match up with what it looks like I'm saying? And this is what it looks like at arm's length away. Yes, the audio does sync with the video. Me personally, I haven't been able to see any lag between the video and the audio, which is awesome for a budget action camera. Now, where we get into trouble is when you put it in the waterproof case, but that's nothing new. Next up, I'm going to put this little camera in its waterproof housing. As you can see, I am holding it with my hand.
Can you hear what I'm saying inside the Seabird? Or are you listening to my voice recorder right now? If you want your camera to be in a waterproof housing, I'd rather that my camera be protected than hear what's going on. And I just want to say, this camera looks an awful lot like another camera I know. While doing the audio test, I also noted a pulsing sound in the background. But for some reason, this only happens when I'm inside. I'll update down below if I ever get figure out a way to make it stop. So my final thoughts. For around $100, this camera is amazing. It's been hard for me to find a camera that I'd actually want to carry around with me, and I have reviewed a couple others. This one is actually one that I have carried around with me. The video quality is pretty decent. The audio syncs with the video. There's no funky colors going on. It doesn't look super dark. I have seen worse. Now, with electronic image stabilization off and the lens distortion correction on, the picture quality is pretty good. There is uh, there is no flex when you have the lens distortion correction on. Now, if you want a gimbal already, I found the perfect combination for you. This camera with LDC on in the gimbal and you're going to have fantastic videos. Now, if you need help deciding on a gimbal, I know there's two popular ones out there and I have a video right here that'll help you decide. But let me rewind real quick. The video quality. If one is a cell phone video from 2001 and 10 is the GoPro Hero 7 Black, I give this an eight. Audio wise, and I know a lot of people would argue that audio is more important than video. And in some cases you're right. In this case, if one is a cell phone video from 2001, and 10 is the audio from my D80 D3 Pro, I give this a 7. The audio is synced up with the video, however, at times it sounds like it's a little bit muffled, but it is still clear and you can hear what's going on. Now for $100, this is a great choice. Well, there you go. The Xiaomi Seabird 4K, I give it the big Melcid stamp of approval. If you have any questions or have any comments or just want to see something else about this camera, leave it in the comments below. And if you just want to show me some love, you know what to do. If you want to see more videos like this, I would love it if you would subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.